What is up, good people? We are here, Jeremy, my two compadres, David. What up? Corey. Hello, players. Hello, and we are reacting to the PlayStation Showcase. I want to give a few of our quick thoughts, what we thought, what we liked, what we're excited about. Fellas, overall feelings about Sony going forward this year thus far? Good, bad? Uh yeah, I think they showed a lot. That's what they had to do. It's been a real kind of quiet almost year where they've had a couple showcases, but it's been real like low key stuff. I think they showed off uh, 30 games during this showcase and a really good variety. Lots of indies, lots of sequels to uh, indie titles that we really love. Yeah. Um, lots of new stuff. And of course, they have the really, really big heavy hitters. So good variety, a good number of games. And they kept it really focused on showing one game after the other and not, you know, so much talking heads. Right. Yeah, I uh I didn't watch the showcase, but I watched a uh re whatever word you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And uh the big hitter ones, the graphics look amazing. Yeah. Like uh we were talking earlier about the Assassin's Creed, Corey said it looked really good and I looked at the trailer real quick, I was like, That is really good. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> really yeah. beautiful. Uh, there it's just getting better and better. Yeah, I feel like they've got uh they had to impress a little bit. Not not really talked about a lot, but I feel like low key for spoken left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. Yeah. And so they kind of got to come back a little from that. Um, more than well, not as much as Xbox has to, but that's another conversation. Oh, All right, guys. So let, let's, mention let's, them. <laughs> let's talk about got to mention them. Let's talk about uh, some of the takeaways, some of the things we're excited about. I can lead off with this with one you guys okay. want. Yeah. And Go I right say ahead. that because uh, you guys just kind of mentioned it. Assassin's Creed Mirage. Now, look, I am someone that in previous levels, I swore off Assassin's Creed, man. I'm like, well, I said <laughs> I was near. I, I said I was nearly. I said I was nearly. Right. You you swore it off. I'm nearly, right? Assassin's Creed Mirage looks like what I want. When I told Ubisoft, Ubisoft listens to me secretly in my phone. Because when I told Ubisoft, hey, I <laughs> want a antagonist or protagonist of color in some place like in Egypt or in Africa. They gave me Assassin's Creed Origins, okay? So they listened again. So we're once again taken on Basim, who I believe is from uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And, but we're taking him on years before that story. You are going to be him in Baghdad as he's recruited by the Hidden Ones. So this gives me two things that I really wanted. Mirage seems to be more of a return to the stealth gameplay mechanics of the original Assassin's Creed's which is something that I've wanted. I appreciate the newer version, newer take, but I kind of wanted that. And also, I wanted to return to the Middle East. I've expressed before that one of the things I loved about the first one was that it took place in the Middle East during the Crusades. That one took place in Syria. This one takes place in Baghdad, you know, Iraq, Middle East, so to speak. So we're returning to that locale. I love the look and the architecture, and the design and everything they have going there. Graphically, it looks incredible. It's a Ubisoft game, so I have timid expectations, but it is something I'm looking forward to. I will say Assassin's Creed Mirage. That was nice to see. It's a it's such a pretty location. Like it you is. have the greenery, you have the great architecture with like the painted roofs and stuff. Really great location. Uh, something that in this little blurb on IGN, uh, it's smaller in scope, which yes. I think everybody wants because the last couple have been you can play this for a hundred hours it's a huge map all these like we kind of want the smaller in scope now we've always talked yeah. about this you 10, can do hours. stuff for a hundred hours <laughs> right? right that's what it is you can do yeah, stuff for exactly hours. yeah um i'll jump in next if that's okay david yeah go ahead all right so the one that i looked at it was kind of early on in the presentation i thought looked fantastic was this game called phantom blade zero mm -hmm. it is a hack and slash rpg which i'm a huge fan of quick action paced games it reminded me a little bit of ghost of Tsushima, a little bit of neo it looks like it has kind of hard combat you know that old samurai look you know um it mentions on this little blurb it's steampunky which is a really cool combination to me um the enemy design looked really cool the world um art style wise looked really great and i just i really love fast paced action uh action games and this looks yeah. right up my alley so uh definitely looking forward to that one no, it looks it looks very cool. The read a little bit about it. You're playing someone called a soul and you're looking for your heart, which is stolen, which kind of 
paints uh i don't know shades of something else i'm excited about really that cute. paints to a to a previous a previous game in the series so but yeah definitely something that i'm going to check out it looked kind of look a little i'm be honest it looked a little scary it did it looked like it it looked dangerous you know like it wasn't like a <laughs> hey let's go explore this world happy go lucky it looked like things are out to mm. kill you and it's a little dangerous it looks scary. A little, a little okay, scary. scary okay yeah, yeah a little, little scary little jump scary okay all right we'll yeah. take that <laughs> speaking of scary um, I mentioned this levels ago when we first heard about it, but Alan Wake 2, that looked pretty good. I, I watched the trailer and definitely interested. Alan Wake 2, that's Remedy, right? Yeah. It, it said Alan Wake 2. Remedy don't miss, man. Remedy, Remedy, they man. They don't miss. I remember, remember I was saying that Remedy was like a studio I would love to see take a turn at the Halo IP. Yeah. Like just the way they do narratives and games is like super cool. And David, if I recall, you really liked control, right? Yeah. 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 It was so... a surprise one for David too. Yeah. I, did yeah, I them, didn't so... expect it. And this is like, that was like a little bit horror. Like it had a horror, like fringe to it. Kind of like psychological you know, horror. Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah. This, this is horror and that is right up your wheelhouse, you know? So that's, that's really cool. I think that's what, uh, David's goatee tug me in there <laughs> yeah 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 so um like i mentioned before kind of going back to what you were saying with uh, quantum blade right that whole hints to things the other thing i'm excited about is they did the trailer for dragon's dogma 2 now i kind of hinted at before because the main kind of um exciting incident in the original in the first dragon's dogma is that a dragon steals your heart and so oh, we're in gotcha. a quest to kill this dragon and get your heart back, right? So uh, super excited for that because Dragon's Dogma is such a underrated open world R- RPG action. Like these huge, you know, your 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 Shadow of Colossus huge boss battle things that happen. But there's like, you know, so many things you can do with like your combat tree and different elements and and there is definitely room for improvement with this with that game. So I'm hoping that the sequel does improve in those. Graphically, it looks like it's going to be where it needs to be. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to that because, um, yeah, your boy's already got Dragon's Dogma on his PS5 loaded up. So there's I am another reading, one to add to it. I'm reading right now that it was developed in the RE engine. So you know nice. it's going to look fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, we've talked about that engine all the time on this mm-hmm. podcast. We we love that engine. It's so beautiful. Yeah. So it, it, the games look amazing. Yeah, that's a huge boom for Dragon Dogma. Dragon's Dogma too. I'm 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 curious how they're going to use it at such a larger scale compared to the yeah, RE we, games. Or we haven't focused. seen an open world game with that engine. I don't I don't believe. I don't, I don't think. Yeah, so. I don't think so. Just this the smaller straight narrow game. So mm-hmm. It'll be kind of exciting to see how it holds up through like yeah like a huge open world. Um, man, <laughs> my second one's real easy to guess. Um, Spider Man Two. Spider Man Two. Uh-huh. Not only was it was it did it look good, they showed a ten minute gameplay feature on it. Man, it looked fantastic. You had the symbiote suit uh, being worn by Peter Parker, mm-hmm. um, that gave him much new abilities, which was awesome because you have two playable characters in this, at least two playable characters. You have Peter Parker, Spider-Man, and you have Miles Morales, Spider-Man, which, you know, um, going from game to game, they were mostly the same with a couple different abilities by Miles Morales, but now with the symbiote suit, very much different abilities. So you are going to get two different kind of gameplays between these two characters, which is a which is fantastic design because you don't want to switch between, between two characters that are, that are kind of the same. So this is really good. Um, story looks fantastic. You know, they're setting up Craven the Hunter, which uh, Craven is not a not a huge. He's kind of huge in the Spider-Man universe, obviously, right. but he's not like one of the big hitters. But he always does have an interesting story where he wants to hunt Spider-Man because he always wants to get that next big hunt. And uh, the symbiote suit messing with Peter Parker. Um, I was kind of laughing because in the trailer he was so aggressively dark. What do you want? You know, he was so <laughs> mean, so aggressive. It's like, all right, all right. They're really emphasizing that, but uh, I'm glad they are. Everything looks good. Uh, it's coming out this year, which is huge for Sony because uh, they need a big hitter, and that's going yeah. to be a big hitter. And I'm for excited sure. for it. Uh, yeah, very, yeah, it's very, very excited. It's going to hit well. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't see where we'd hold it back really. All right, David, on to you, man. I'm interested so, to hear this one. Th- this might be a little obvious, but the the VR for Resident Evil 4. Okay. I, I have the original 
Resident Evil 4 VR, and I couldn't play. I was getting motion sickness. But to be in this world with how well it looks now, because it looks so good. <laughs> yeah, because the the other one, it you know, it was Resident Evil, cool, but like it's a it was a video game. This just you look like you're in a corroded, beat down building. Yeah, you know it's so so real, and I'm I'm excited to see gameplay for that. RE keeping it keeping it Keep keeping it on brand with the RE on brand. Yeah, I think. Gotta. Did you play any with the newer like RE two RE three? Did they do any VR for those two? Those two I did not. Don't okay. Think so, yeah. Uh, seven and eight did. Ah, okay. But those don't those don't work in the same engine as those though, right? Or do they? I believe. I believe, I believe so. Yeah. Do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay, cool. I was gonna say, is this like the first VR within that engine? But I guess not. <clears throat> um, can we give a couple other quick shout outs? Yeah. Yeah. If you got I think we. I think we'd be amiss if we didn't at least, even though not, I don't know if any of us are huge fans. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Three remake, Snake Eater. Uh, that, that's a uh, big the trailer. One for like, blew my mind when I watched. It. I'm not even a Metal Gear Solid fan. I was blown away before he was showing up. I was like, <laughs> this game looks fantastic. What is it? Am I going to play a snake? Am I surviving in the woods? And I was like, oh, Metal Gear Solid. And uh, I might jump into it because that's kind of currently like known as like. I would say it's probably the best Metal Gear Solid game. Uh, yeah. Obviously up for debate, but uh, yeah, that looks really, really good. Bungie with Marathon, they don't own, they don't own yeah. Halo. So what do they do? They're bringing Go back, back the older Halo. Yeah. <laughs> the kind of like, hey, Sony, you want this franchise now that you own us? And Right. That's one I'm keenly looking into because not only do you have that. Now, I've mentioned before on the podcast, but... If I recall, PlayStation's original answer to Halo was Shadowfall. Well, not well, Killzone, I should say. Shadowfall oh, was the last of Killzone. But uh, yeah, I think Killzone was their answer to Halo. Even though one can make the argument that Resistance was a better uh, answer to that to that uh, that thing. So I think that's what Bungie is essentially giving them now. Marathon is going to be their answer to Halo. And look, we talked before about Destiny Two and yada yada. Not the greatest Bungie, yada yada. When it comes down to it, even though Destiny has a lot of issues, its gunplay is superb. Bungie knows yeah. how to do gunplay. So I'm really curious about where they're going to go with Marathon. I think I feel like PlayStation games generally tend to take a darker t- tone compared to other game publishers with their first parties. Now, they may be different because I like the way the Xbox is kind of leaning with the Hellblade series and all that. But I, I'm curious as to what they do with that. I know that the gunplay is going to be on point and when you add into it the fact that we're going to be playing it on a dual sense controller not this regular other controller stuff a controller that actually innovates i think it's going to make for a great experience with some top-notch gunplay so yeah, yeah they resurrected something from the dead and said playstation want this since you own us playstation's like yeah these other guys i know how to handle their ip we'll take it from here buddy right <laughs> yeah um, definitely interested in that. If you're off mentioning to mention, you know, Metal Gears, uh, Final Fantasy 16. Yeah. Look great, you know. It, another one to add to the franchise. Another one that's going to probably be here for a couple years. Coming out very you know? soon as well. Yeah. 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 Uh, less than a yeah. month. Less than a yeah. month at this point. So. Yeah. There's. Are there any releases? I can't remember. Are there any releases that are being sandwiched between? Freaking Zelda and Final Fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. Street Fighter, Street Fighter 6 is well, June 2nd. I, I guess I guess that um, makes they're in they're in Diablo, such a different lane. Diablo so. 4. Such a different lane. Those Diablo? make sense. I feel like, yeah. Different lane than you're just saying yeah. that Zelda and Final Fantasy are very closely related. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you've I mean you've basically you basically got what like a CRPG and a yeah, fighting okay. game I, I don't i don't know if they would really conflict as much as far as like their core audiences and people that be really looking forward to them i was just okay no, you know i was just wondering enough. yeah i was just wondering if any game was going to get the respawn treatment where you had your perfect shooter released between two other big shooters and it failed for that reason so but that looks like it's not going to happen i believe uh golem is coming out sometime which is just going to <laughs> yeah, get destroyed <laughs> yeah People are gonna be like, oh yeah. I don't I don't have high hopes for it, but hopefully. 
Uh, yeah. But w- was there any other takeaways from the PlayStation Showcase? Uh, like I said, I think it was just overall a good showcase. Um, they also released that like that mobile thing that's gonna come, a handheld, not console, but do you guys see this? Yes, 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 yes. What, what do yeah. we think about that? <sighs> it's just streaming. Is that what? That's what I'm understanding. That right? Yeah, that's what I'm understanding. That it's just for streaming. Okay. Uh, good luck to them. We'll see. Good luck It'll to be interesting. Them. Priced right. Maybe I get it. Probably not, but we'll see. At least it's something new. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I think it is cool that Sony's getting back into the handheld game a little bit. Right. Uh, yeah, but that's it for us. Quick thoughts on the PlayStation Showcase. This is Thoughts and Players. We release a weekly gaming podcast. If you like this, make sure you subscribe, follow, can tune in for more. Um, until next time, we will catch you on the next level. Peace.